So, hello everybody and uh, welcome to a new episode of The Solar Journey. My guests today are Kari Tunkara and Torsten Schreiber. Welcome to the show, Kari and Torsten. Happy to have you here. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thanks for coming. Yeah. So, Kari is the brand communications manager of Africa Green Tech, and Torsten, he's the founder and CEO of Africa Green Tech. The vision of Africa Green Tech is to make Africa independent from fossil fuels. Africa Green Tech is a German African joint venture between social entrepreneurs, scientists, and investors. It finances and operates German energy, water, and recycling technology in Africa. Africa Green Tech makes a difference by designing business models adequate for the local situation. And to give you an idea about the size, Green Tech Africa operates from 30 sites with around 150 full-time employees and has developed projects worth 100 million euros. Before joining Africa Green Tech, Kadi worked and still works for a variety of organizations. She's uh, in the technical committee for the Africa Games, the disability inclusion consultant of the International Committee of the Red Cross. She works for the World Anti-Doping Agency and the International Olympic Committee. And She was an Olympian in basketball for Mali at the 2008 Beijing Olympic Games. By the way, Mali came 12th as best African country. Um, on the other side, there's little to nothing known on Torsten's physical activities on the internet. Um, <laughs> considering what this could include, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, Torsten has been in the startup business for 34 years. In his early career, he ran online apparel businesses. He was also the social media consultant to the German political party, the Pirates. Um, for the non-German listeners, the Pirates' core topic is freedom, transparency, and civil rights protection in the internet. And in 2012, he co-founded Better West. The, the aim of Better West was to provide crowdfunding to energy-saving projects in Germany. Finally, in 2018, he co-founded Africa Green Tech. And on the side, he's involved in a magazine for social entrepreneurs. And I think that he does a lot more. He's very active on LinkedIn to the extent that he is the current LinkedIn voice for 2022 for sustainability. Again, you two, a very warm welcome. So, Kadi, where are you right now? Uh, well, hello, Torsten. Uh... I am uh, in Senegal, Dakar, uh, Senegal, actually, in, in a small town, a bit far from Dakar. But just wanted to make it clear in my introduction that I'm not working for the World Anti-Doping Agency and the IOC. Okay. I'm a volunteer and commission member for both of those organizations. Okay, okay. Not okay. a full paid job. <laughs> All right, okay, excellent. All right, so uh, from one to 10, with uh, 10 being super, what are Torsten's basketball skills? Wow, should we go there? Because uh, I'm uh, <laughs> sitting next to my CEO. Uh, I would say that uh, he's, uh, <laughs> um, I have not seen him actually on a basketball course, so I cannot right. assess that. It, it right. will be next to our agenda. All right, put that on the agenda. All right. So uh, you, you just mentioned it. So I, I mentioned a, a, a quite a few jobs. So what you're doing now for Africa Green Tech, that's your 100% job. All the other activities are, let's say, paused or... Yeah. Exactly. You, all right. Okay. Cool. I was wondering. I was wondering. So you just joined Africa Green Tech in October 22. So what made you join after spending all your career in multinational large organization? What attracts you in Africa Green Tech? Thank you. Well, thank you for that. It's a, it's a great question. Um, I think we have common values and common directions that we wanted to take. Actually, uh, had met with the. Uh, Aida and Torsten uh, through Mohammed Yunus on his birthday uh, during um, a social business uh, uh, summit that he was running because I was also uh, uh, collaborating with the Yunus Sports Hub on different projects. And we just found that we have these common values that we want to empower communities. They were doing it in a different way and I wanted to do it through a foundation. Mm -hmm. I think our, um, our values collided there and it was ongoing discussions until we actually got to sit uh, one day and that to decide that we will take um, the same direction. And I'm happy uh, and thankful for that opportunity to, to really bring some 
uh, a new phase, but also a new direction and also be able uh, with the authorization uh, of Taurus and Heat to give my overview of where branding and communication can move forward with AGT in the future. Yeah, excellent. And um, in our um, discussions up front, you, you, you told me that you have a, a special task now, which is about empowering women and communities. Could you could you specify that? And what are you going to add to, to Africa at Green Tech with that task? Uh, thank you, uh, Torsten. I think, uh, obviously, core business of Africa Green Tech is to bring electricity, but we know what electricity can do besides just uh, bringing light. And we feel that this is the way for us to really strongly empower communities on the impact side through different energy solutions, uh, whether it's, you know, just bringing um, uh, a refrigerator into a store and they can start a whole new business and have a whole new perspective on how to provide uh, income uh, for their family and attain financial autonomy through that. But it's also for children, for example, to be have, a, have access to light and study in the evenings. And if I take it to a sport level, which I really enjoy, even in Africa, we also have now different products where um, we can even unlight courts so that children can also play sports and women can also play sport and take part into other social activities. And that's, you know, what we do in, in villages, but within our company as well, I think it's a strong direction that uh, Torsten is leading uh, as a CEO to really enable women to also uh, play an important role. And I think within our team, women are really being key now. So I think in all aspects, Africa Green Tech is a company that's looking forward to that, to really ensure that we empower women in any, um, in any ways possible. Yeah. So it's not about only bringing electricity light to the to the communities, but uh, you want to empower the, the communities. So what, what do you actually do once you have installed a um, a, a small local um, grid? What, what do you add to to empower the communities? What, what do you actually do to achieve that? The empowerment, yeah. Thank you. Uh, I think this is very, very, very important question because beside uh, the impact side, I think we have a whole business model that we're bringing through that process. First of all, our electricity is not uh, free. So we're having uh, the population is actually paying for the electricity and it enables a lot of small businesses to develop. I think um, uh, when we look at our, our clients, we even have a specific financement plan for welders, let's say, who need much power to be able to, to do their job on site. So we bring that uh, um, that model that they can pay for the electricity and we invest it into their business. That's the real core of social business and where we also embrace really the idea of um, Yunus, the Nobel Prize and, and uh, creator of social business is that we really want to bring in beside the electricity, a full business model where uh, a population can realize their small businesses and can be empowered through that. With that, we also have a blended approach with other uh, products that we're bringing around electricity. As you've mentioned before, uh, in the introduction, we also have uh, some water pumps. We also have Wi-Fi that we're bringing. We're bringing a clean water system to all that put together with our financial models. It's really to empower the community at large uh, with all the solutions they might need, again, to access uh, uh, economic and financial autonomy. Yeah, excellent. I think we can uh, um, circle to that back in, in more detail also uh, later. Um, excellent, thank you. Uh, Torsten, um, just to get you um, in included in the conversation. <laughs> um, no, I, can, I, I love to listen, Kari. Yeah, I mean, super. Yeah. Um, yeah, you you started out a, yeah, you you started out as a, a trained publishing clerk. So if we as we go decades back, and you ran online shops for apparel, you sold suits on eBay basically. So now and now you're a social entrepreneur, and uh, you initiate green energy projects in in Africa. You you live in Africa, right? Um, we see you now in in Senegal. And um, take us on your on your journey from from eBay and apparel to to what you are and what you do today what, what what's what's your solar journey how did it come about yeah. well it's all about love i can say <laughs> the, the change <laughs> comes with with my wife is ida she she is also a good friend from kadi she's also malian 
and we met um, in my uh, closing time where I, I was in April. And um, this was after eBay, because uh, so the the um, the eBay journey is about e-commerce. I mean, I was yeah. focused on on closing, on man closing, because the my my parents after they separate the the new um, husband of my mother, he was in in closing business for for years, for decades, and so I moved from Freiburg to Frankfurt, and um, together with him, I, I I found out that I have some some good. Uh, um, qualities and strengths uh, to open a business. And so we started in 2000, uh, in 1999 with the one of the first outlet shops in, in, in Frankfurt, in Wiesbaden. And um, then 2001, some of us remember, it was the, the terror attack on the World Trade Center in New York. So all our people stand around, we had no clients, and so we we developed this um, eBay thing. Uh, on that time, it calls Ricardo because it was a copy from the Samba Brothers. And um, we was one of the first eBay power sellers. And we just sold our our clothing there uh, because there was no more clients in the, in the shop um, as a consequence of this terror attack. Mm -hmm. So then we see we can make more profits in, 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 e-commerce than in traditional um, retail shops and I just I'm a, ch a really digital guy since I was child I had uh, the first computer the Commodore 64 and I just I just follow all the time as a young man uh, this digital nomad thing that's also why I later go to the pirate party so yeah. I'm very interested in internet digital things and computers um, and so I, I I created a great e-commerce brand um, and we was uh, I think for two years we was the biggest European power seller for for closing and um, then 2006 the um, the business model they changed um, from eBay they just uh, one orientated themselves back to the to the one euro market uh, because meanwhile amazon was growing very fast and they took over this um this um, catalog pricing things yeah so, so you buy something for a fixed price and this was our business model on ebay because there some of you perhaps remember there was a sh ebay shops and we was very strong in that and then ebay yeah. just changed it overnight their algorithm and uh, finally, we got bankrupt because we was focused on this catalog selling yeah. product, not wow. um, uh, selling for one euro, a 500 euro suit. Mm. And um, in this time, I, I met Ida um, okay. as a bankrupt uh, uh, entrepreneur. So yeah. uh, I also know the, the, the these these experiences. Yeah. And um through either I, I I was going to Africa, um, visiting Mali in 2006, the first time. The country was not in 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 in, in a civil war like today. Uh, there was people traveling with with um, campers to attend the Niger Music Festival. Even American stars was coming there to take their their their, their uh, beats there. And um, so I met Africa from a very personal and, and, and direct way. And I just fall in love to first the woman and later the continent. Yeah. And um, and that time, then we, we get our child. And uh, with the born of my, my daughter, uh, 2009, I, I started really reflecting all this um yeah geopolitical things how we treat africa in the past all this colonialism then you have a child what has uh, uh, is a is a color mix uh, a culture mix of uh, two <clears throat> different cultures and this really impacted myself on reflecting my own values and my own beliefs and um so i i was starting i i, I think 2006 the transformation started but 2009 i really started to be more an African guy, more cosmopolitan, and um, also, yeah, reflect the values what we have in Germany. I mean, we talk about racism, all these things. And in that time, so it's 2009 until today, I, I transformed myself into the person I'm today. Mm. I'm, I think I'm the better person today than 2006. Um, because I also see how bad is this uh, closing industry, 
how we um, yeah treat people in Bangladesh. That's also why I'm very close to Mohammed Yunus, because this, I mean, this difference between the global north and the global south is today a big point for me, uh, yeah. where I want to be a change maker, yeah. that we have fair trade and treat people well. And um, yeah, this is, um, it's a personal development, I can say. Yeah. Qu quite a journey. Thanks a lot for sharing. Um, yeah, quite touching. Excellent. Um, Kadi, in, in, in your own words, what does Af Green, Green Tech Africa do? Well, what's what's special about it? Uh, so many things are special about what Africa can do. <laughs> uh, but I think some of, perhaps I can turn that into the values of perhaps sharing first. We're huh? sharing technology. We're bringing German innovation into Africa and we're sharing uh, technology and innovation. And now we even add it uh, now to the value chain by relocating the company in Africa so that we can also employ Africans and work more in 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 say in symbiosis with the with the continent rather than shipping our product our plan is to later produce them here or at least assemble most of our products here so that's first uh we're bringing that sharing is caring is what i like to say mm -hmm. i think a second point is really empowering empowering the community through energy solutions that are suitable for the future. As we all know, I mean, you're in this sector, uh, fossil industry is, is not the future for us. Uh, uh, by 2090, I believe no more coal will be available on earth, you know? Uh, mm. 2022, no more oil reserves. The oil reserve will be gone. So diesel is not suitable. So we're really trying to find here the best solution for Africa and to impact positively and at the same time, we want to, as I said, send out a new business model that's feasible and that's suitable for the population here to also prevent immigration for the youth, for example, because they can open their new, uh, their own business here and they can be empowered through that process that we feel is the fair way for us and for the future generations. So I think Africa Green Tech is, is bringing a lot of impact and values here that are also in line with my personal values as an Olympian. Uh, as you know, the spirit of Olympism is to make the world a better place through sport. Uh, if you relate it to Africa Green Tech, we're trying to make a better world through energy solutions yeah. and that are renewable. So um, uh, it's it, it's very important. And I think impact is really key for us here. Yeah, good, excellent. So who's got the the ideas for all your projects? Um, it's You have a mess of, of projects already running and uh, you keep um, creating new projects all the, all the time. So how does it happen? Is it all internally or just friends or networks or do you meet people and they say, hey, I would love to do that? How does it work? The And how do you yeah. then choose the projects? I think that's a mix of all, but to the, the, the core business of HET, it's, it's, uh, it's two parts. It's the ideas of Yunus, um, how to run a business so uh, not focus on profit um, more on impact and um, i learned very early 2016 as the framework from the sustainable development goals from the united nations come up to to put the whole company uh, based on this framework so since six years we are one of the really early adopters um, we measure our work uh, through this 17 um, development goals and we are very very proud that HET can today in the impact side uh, provide 11 uh, add 11 values to 11 SDGs out of the 17 so it's not only about electricity electricity is the beginning of everything for us because all appliances work with renewable electricity but mm -hmm. um, coming to your question it's really important that um, you hear what are the needs of your clients and as we are not part of the development aid uh, to go there and say, we are the white people, we know we need that, you will need that. So we build you a school. Um, we are not interested uh, how you pay the teacher, but we build you the building. Just joking, that's something what I see in even in Mali in hundreds of villages where development aid, well, we're constructing building, but nobody take care who will pay the teacher. Mm -hmm. So uh, the schools are uh, are not in in in. in um are not working you know they're yeah. just closed in new buildings never a teacher was 
And so we 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 learned that um, that a different culture and a different also tradition um, needs different solutions. You cannot come as a white person and just think that everything went like uh, you know that from Germany, especially in electricity. So if you look to, to diesel chainsets, what is my personal enemy, you know, I founded yeah. a company um, to really stop diesel chainsets in, in Africa. Um, for me, it was in the beginning very difficult to, to convince our partners and the governments um, to stop diesel chainsets even in hybrid solutions because the World Bank was providing the information that uh, a solar system is only working well if you add a diesel chainset. And I said, no, it's possible already with pure photovoltaic and battery systems. So in the beginning, I had really a technical fight with technical advisors from the government who said, no, the World Bank say in their report, we need to... to um, um, put a diesel chainset on site and say, no, I don't want to have diesel, you know, because it's it's fossil and it's against environment. So we designed the first really pure battery PV system, what is independently working until today in Mali. Um, it was our pilot project in Murcia 2014. Yeah. And um, we just installed four weeks ago the first pure renewable off-grid set in Madagascar. Uh -huh. All others, I mean, there are also other mini grids with solar, but they have always 30, 40% 40 fossil energy into it. The reason is technically because the, the frequency what a diesel chainset gives into the network is normally needed to have a stability. So yeah. we do that with a, with a lithium battery. And um, so you see there are also um, really paradigm change what we bring in solar technology in the African continent and that we are very proud. Meanwhile, my pilot project in Murcia 2014 is the new World Bank standard for right. mini grids in Africa. Yeah. So if you look over years, it's step by step by step. And uh, our, I will say, secret is that we just listen to that what people need on the ground and then we develop products for them. Mm -hmm. So we have, for example, a, a, a fridge what only needs eight hours per day access to electricity. Why? Because even here in Dhaka, even in many African uh, cities, you have electricity, but not 24 hours. So you have power cuts, sometimes for 30 minutes, sometimes for four hours. And in the rainy season, you even have it for six, eight hours a day. Yeah. So we develop products who can handle these power cuts. And um, in Europe, people ask me, what stupid product is that for what you need that? But they don't understand that uh, the, on the ground, we have, we're facing huge problems mm. with quality of electricity, not yeah. only access to electricity. Yeah. So you, you do have a, what, a technical team or do you use external companies to design uh, your, your systems or how do you go about it? Well, I will say there is a master brain in Africa, Green Tech. Um, that's me. <laughs> um, <laughs> because I have this ground experience, you know. Yeah. But I'm happy that I can now bring uh, much more local people uh, and they, they follow me. Kadi yeah. is uh, just, we come here and she, we, we talk about different um, size of solutions. And uh, she told me that's, that's great. I can learn so much. And I'm, and you know, they, they, they like to, to know this, this information, but yeah. I think especially Africa Green Tech is the specialty that we, we visited. I personally visited more than 200 rural villages in the Sahel, yeah. even in war zones. So I have seen what people go through. And yeah. this knowledge helps me to then discuss with technical guys. I mean, technology, we have enough. It's I can say there is an existing solution for everything. The <laughs> biggest problem to bring these technical solutions into uh, a rural area in Africa is only finance. Yeah. So convincing investors that somebody will make it run into the ground. Yeah. This is the big problem because even World Bank financed or um, German government financed projects uh, failed because people didn't really think about a sustainable business. Development. So meaning how I can 
convince local people that they take care about that what you bring to yeah. them so no? how do you do that how do you make sure that that big chunk of technology you dump is then maintained and operated and uh, used in a, in a, in the design way how do you do that right because you mentioned that school the schools in mali that they they just deserted right nobody knows you know there's no teachers there's no possibly no books so how do you make sure that it's truly sustainable and um, things are used for 10 20 30 years yeah there are two answers one answer is our own business model we don't sell containers we don't sell photovoltaic modules or batteries we run them as an operator so we sell electricity drinking water and cool chain solutions okay there we rent in out so people rent cool space they don't have to buy our products it's the most complicated and difficult way to do it because we have to be on the ground 15 years with the community yeah. but this first of all creates a base of trust yeah. because these people know hey this guy with the beard he invested a million dollars in our village so he is interesting that we will pay his bills yeah. so it's a, it's a it's a quite interesting kind of dependency from each other yeah. so they de depend that i run my engines and i depend on them that they pay my 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 bills yeah. and the 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 second phase aspect is then that you treat these people not as victims you treat them as clients mm. and if you take care about your client you as a provider you look that your client is satisfied mm. this great then much stronger trust because Kadi mentioned the welder we the welders are the is the group of clients what is the most a valuable client for us because they took a lots of energy each month mm. then you start looking into the business model what a welder in a village in mali really needs and then you see what kind of materials what kind of clients what kind of products he is doing and we create special tariff systems for them because um for example in 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 i mean you you are from the photovoltaic uh, industry you know that uh, you have phases in the day where the sun is stronger than for for example in the evening mm. and so we 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 make them a better price if they work in i can say happy hours you know <clears throat> yeah. because yeah. we have time we have time where where the the private clients are outside on the field because most of them are farmers yeah. so they don't use the electricity what the container produces so we take the welders and say look all farmers are out from 11 to 4 so in this period you get the half price of the electricity yeah. so they change their production time to the time where the electricity from IGT is much cheaper so your and system so is already far ahead of uh, germany where there's still the fixed far away i mean we we are using way, way ahead so one time you need way to ahead, come back and uh, uh, to no, teach, teach no, germany no, <laughs> you know in, in, if you're doing good things tariffs. in germany If you do doing good things to Germans, they even complain and say, "Oh, that that is missing, that is missing." <laughs> in in uh, Thorsten, in 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 a village in in uh, in Mali, for example, or Niger, yeah. if H if they know we coming, you know, five thousand people sit are right and left on the street and singing H E T H E T. That's the way how happy our clients are, you know. Because how do you stay are, on the ground? This this is like uh, dangerous for your. For your psyche. No, 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 no. I mean, I have enough stress with with convincing investors for the company. So <laughs> okay. um, no, I, this is, to be honest, that's the reason why I do this work because mm. this positive, thankful energy from our clients um, makes us uh, also Kadi happy. I mean, you have the same experience in in sports. Mm. If if children play football and they they making a challenge and I mean making people lucky and happy and self determinated and 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 free i mean that's mm. the greatest thing you can do as a human being you know yeah. um only that's the other day you you raised so many topics okay. only the other day I, i read in a in a management book and i think it's true and i experienced that myself was a uh, the strength of the founders becomes the weakness of the enterprise and uh, mm -hmm. when you run around and the guy with the beer when you mentioned that 
um, that there's only one of you, right? And and as you keep growing, um, that that's a dangerous thing, right? So you, we, 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 this phase is already uh, behind us. I can yeah. call it. Cuddy is the best uh, example because Cuddy. You're will preparing replace, for that, yeah. yeah. We re she will replace me as the front communicator. What I'm since eight years. Yeah. yeah and Cuddy is I I know that she will even do it more better and more authentic. Okay. If you look to AGT yeah. as a company, you know, but uh, we we see this. I mean, that's even a big problem for our funding rounds because mm -hmm. uh, investors always say, I mean, you're working in terrorist zones if these people. Um, uh, hijack you or kill you uh, what will be, be with my money exactly you know? yeah, so, it's a one yeah. uh, it looks it's like a one-man show yeah. yeah the key man risk so-called by investors but yeah. that's it's over because we 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 have um we have a group of directors now it's seven people mm -hmm. for the different departments and i have a, a colleague in my in the in the board wolfgang who is the cfo okay he is he's even now in 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 in, in wien in in Zurich, he was on the NOAA on stage. So he talks over and he stays in Germany. I mean, he's not necessarily have to travel all the time to Africa because we do yeah. the groundwork. But he is the guy who is also uh, in charge of everything. He has access to everything. And the team is also close to him. So today I can even say if something happened, HET will survive even without me. And I'm proud yeah. to say that. Yeah. Yeah, of course we don't. We expect, we hope for the for the opposite. No, no, but yeah. it's it's a, it's one of the first questions. Yeah, in yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so you mentioned that uh, first uh, standalone system in uh, in Niger, I think it was. Um, what, what was the biggest learning from uh, you you got from that project and other projects? What's the biggest learning where you said, "Man, we didn't think of that," but it's essential to make the project successful. What's the key learning? Yeah, right. that you cannot sell equipment to African communities. You cannot think that a high-tech engine is working in a Malian village where it's 50 degrees, where people, 90% of uh, are alphabets. You cannot just leave them technology and think that something sustainable ran out of it. So yeah. this shift we made in the three first projects, because yeah. there we planned to sell the container to the community mm. and they pay in, in, in monthly rates. But yeah. the idea was to train the village itself. Like in Germany, we say Genossenschaft. So it's like a cooperative yeah. and this cooperative approach failed um, in, in, in the early uh, three years of HET. And then we switched uh, to this much more difficult model where we own the asset. Yeah. And we um, we sell the, the 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 service, not the engine. Yeah. So how do you acquire um, capital? Who who are the who's the typical investor? Who's the? Yeah. There are three types of investors. Um, there is the classic philanthropic people who spend a huge amount um, of money each year in donations. Mm -hmm. um, because we have this um, hashtag investieren statt spenden so invest don't, don't donate invest because this is the philosophy of Mohamed Yunus he says uh, invested dollar um, can get another dollar a donated dollar is lost mm -hmm. and um, this is exactly how we build the whole business model um, and we try we, we don't want that we, we are not in concurrence to to NGOs who need donations for their work. Yeah. But my personal opinion, development aid should be split in two parts. One part is humanitarian urgency. So if there is a catastrophe and yeah. we need to help because people lost their houses because there was a flood, something like that, for that money, for that help, we need donations Quick for money. the future. Yeah, yeah. yeah? Uh, Even refugee camps, things like that. Mm -hmm. But all um, poverty and coming out of poverty, we will not solve with donations. Because if we give these people, and that's not something, an African problem, you find this in Indonesia, wherever you have poverty. And if you don't give people back their dignity and their, their um, self-determination, you cut them the motivation to change. 
And this is the main aspect of our work. So uh, coming back to your question with the investor type, we try to talk to um, people who donate their money and say, look, better you invest it. If we fail, you have the same effect like before. It's away your money. But if we make it, you have you can even have it back and reinvest it in other social businesses. Okay. So this is the first type. So the classic philanthropes. Then we see um, many people like you, Torsten. I know uh, um, you are not super rich, but you you are ready to invest perhaps per year five thousand, ten thousand. For that we have this crowdfunding campaign, what is even running in the moment, yeah. um, where you can invest in 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 our German uh, mother house to um, yeah, um, implement our equity. Mm -hmm. And the third group is, in my opinion, uh, not um, the big DFIs or the funds who have lots of money for that, what we do. But they, if, if my experience is if somebody has to invest not its own money, it's much difficult because he go through a very strong due diligence and they're Africa's compliance problems often kick us out in the process because we cannot guarantee yeah. that uh, there is no corruption in Mali. You know, yeah. um, we can we can say yes, we will not support corruption from our side, but we cannot guarantee that the whole government is corrupt. So that's the problem for many institutional investors. So in my opinion, it's better to have. I will say entrepreneurs who are between 60 and 70 who say, look, I have made lots of money out of my business. I want to give back something. And um, these investors who invest 500,000, for example, for in for um, realize a whole village. Um, this is our, I will say, best group. Um, most of them are not easy to access because they are surrounded by um, tax consultants and lawyers who are risk averse like crazy yeah. because they was never in Africa. They don't see that. But if we have a meeting to a person who made the money out of his own company over 30 years, um, we have a nearly 100% success quote that he, they invest in AGT. Because yeah. if they meet me or Wolfgang and they see how much positive impact our work has on the people they they love us i can say but it's yeah. easy to, it's not easy to access these people yeah so how, how do you do it it's a network it's just a growing network recommendation and uh... that's my my tremendous work uh, in in linkedin the last years because i started linkedin 2008 um with with uh, th that time some of you remember it was openbc and xing who was very strong in German speaking uh, countries in Switzerland and Austria. And there was Konstantin Gierig, one of the co founders from LinkedIn, is a German guy who lives in Palo Alto. And he addressed me because I was very strong network, I had a very strong network in Xing. And he asked me, Torsten, we have problems to Ooh. convince Germans uh, <laughs> to, to um, yeah, open an account on LinkedIn. Um, can you help us? And then we just made some networking events with with uh, multiplicators, and um, it went very well. They tra transform all their uh, contacts to LinkedIn. So I can say, and I'm very proud to do so, uh, that I was one of the accelerator for LinkedIn in Germany, and um, I'm very proud that today or this year, they they voted me because LinkedIn that's LinkedIn who voted um, me as a top voice. Yeah. Um, yeah, to yeah. this network now I get I have high access to to um, CEOs to other founders who then uh, see my post and say hey yeah I'm, you are right we have to do something what can we do together and my answer is always just invest in Af Africa Green Tech. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Excellent, also, wonderful. So many um, starting points um, that that come up in your in your uh, statements. Um, Kadi and, and Tosn, you both mentioned Mohammed Yunus once. I think uh, I think you should explain to the to the solar crowd. They might not be familiar with him. And what did he do? And why is he? Why did you mention him? Well, um, it's our mentor. 
I can yeah. say. Um, yeah. Kadi is mentor from the sports Yunus part and Mai from the, the pure social business part. Uh, Yunus is, um, he, he has a, a, a Nobel Prize for Peace and he gets this prize um, 20 years ago for creating the microfinance system, yeah. um, so, called, so known as the Grameen Bank. Um, he's a Bangladeshi and um, he put all his life to help people coming out of poverty. Yeah. And um, this microfinance, I mean, meanwhile, it's it's a huge global industry, even with bad parts and dark sides. Mm. But the pure idea from Yunus was give a loan to a woman and this woman can get out can buy something it's uh, it's a small investment it was loans about five hundred dollars to one thousand dollars and in the beginning they had a really successful pay, uh, payback peer um a quote from about hundred percent so it went very very well and um he brings millions of women out of poverty through these loans yeah. And then meanwhile, there, there was a growing industry today. Uh, microfinance business is even in sustainable finance, number one, if you look to to funds. So they created uh, microfinance institutes all over the world. But the, the base idea comes from Yunus. And for that idea, he gets the Nobel Prize. Yeah. And after uh, he was so known, um, he was traveling a lot and, and bringing people this idea of social business. Yeah. Social business, there's, if you look to Google, uh, you find, um, or better you use Ecosia, um, you find a, a lots of different um, explanations, but pure social business uh, in some words needs that you don't focus on, on maximizing the profit in money, mm -hmm. you maximize the outcome of if you positive impact on um, uh, nature, uh, society, and yeah, the, the the people. So the 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 own the <clears throat> old um, explanation of sustainability, yeah. the balance between planet, people, and profit. Yeah. And this is social business. And we are mentees, and there are many mentees out there. Yeah. But um, Yunus, I can say he loves us also. Yeah, we love him also. I was just in Turin some weeks ago to meet him again personally because he's 82 now. Um, and we hope that he get 182. But um, he gives so much spiritual uh, energy to the people. And uh, I'm so happy to be part of this, I will say, family, uh, because these are all change makers. And it's in every, I mean, there was the, the, the uh, CEO of, um, um, how is the name from the uh, coffee there, the, the biggest coffee company in Italy? Star, oh, I don't know. No, no. Barista? No, uh, 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 Barilla, uh, no, hang on. Lavazzo. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the, the CEO of Lavazzo was there. Um, it's it's a huge coffee company. Yeah. And he was so happy to have these social business people around that he even planned to change the whole Lavazzo company into a social business now. Wow. So <laughs> you, you see this these this spiritually of, uh, strengths of Yunus. Um, and um, it was really, it, uh, it loaded my battery uh, fully. Yes. And um, I'm so happy that we, we be part of this idea of a post-capitalism system, um, what strengthen people who heal the world and not destroy the world. I mean, that's yes. an instance. Uh, perhaps yes. you can add something. Sorry. Thank you. I, I think I can summarize units with two, two, two key points. Oh. One is let's put poverty into a museum because it's possible for us. Mm -hmm. And another one is let's do this with a smile and with joy all the time. So he's someone yeah. who smiles all the time and this is what I love about him so much as well. Uh, but I think I, I met him through the Olympic movement because now we have a partnership. I was, steering I was a steering committee member for a program that we call Career Plus. When we look at how athletes transition from sports and in the best way possible through a successful post career as well. Mm -hmm. So now we had created a partnership with the Unisports Hub, where we were training athletes to become entrepreneurs and preferably social entrepreneurs because we see yeah. the impact athletes can have and um and the general population as well, but also as uh, sports values are much uh, in common with social business, business values of empowering of community of diversity. So that's where I think I met the Unisports Hub 
First, I was the trainee for one of their programs because I wanted to start uh, a foundation uh, with them. So they trained me through a year and then I become a consultant and working really closely and understanding where impact is and how we find joy in bringing impact. Because I think that's also very important uh, aspect happy. that we have to, to bring. And it, it it's actually scientific proof that when you're having impact on other people, you actually release some oxytocin and, and then you, you're a happier person. And I think that's why probably Mohamed Yunus is such a happy person. And you always see him smiling, um, <laughs> hugging, at, uh, hugging <laughs> and, and doing all that hard work that he has done because he's done tremendous even after uh, just uh, creating microfinance. Yeah, they put, he him also in, put him in jail to destroy yeah. his idea. And Put foundation. So um, I think some 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 very good um, 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 uh, idea and a very good you know role model that he is, but also with concrete solutions that we are using here uh, to empower people and to see as as Thorsten said uh, a new possibility, a new economic model that's sustainable and that can actually bring people out of poverty by bringing them uh, business. Because he also believed that everyone was born an entrepreneur. So it mm. depend, doesn't matter which skills that you have, that you can do something. And that's why he believes that you invest $1, it should be reinvested. And that's really the idea of social business is that you make a profit that's reinvested and make even more profit. And that's what he had used with those poor women. So um, uh, it's, it's very important what he's doing and also what his group is doing now as, as, a, uh, as a job because he's guiding us uh, as a business and as a business model. But we also, I think, in Africa Green Tech, finding our own uh, uh, solutions uh, locally, but using these models. And as Sorsen said, this is what suited, what's best for Africa in the uh, in the settlement that we have with the youngest, uh, let's say, continent now uh, uh, in in ages, what are the possibility? And I think now we also will focus on the youth uh, a lot, looking forward, and also an African uh, diaspora and community and what they can bring in within uh, Africa Green Tech, as 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 Thorsten was saying, even as investors as well, because we know that they're. A lot of Africans who want to just support Africa, and we want to open that possibility as well. Yeah. Um. What wonderful, wonderful. Um. Thanks for thanks a lot for that. Um. When we talk about uh, social entrepreneurship, um, some misunderstand that it's not about making profit. It's only about making other impact rather than than profit. But but that's not the case, right? So it is. You should make. You are allowed to make profit if you want to become a social oh, entrepreneur, yeah. right? It's, it's a because main target. It's right because otherwise it's not sustainable, right? Otherwise you need more and more money all the time, right? So uh, it's it's being a normal entrepreneur, but not only not only just a not the the major target is not only profit, right? Yeah, but the, the profit should be in the in the pure social business. I mean, there are they are different. They are great. It's not only black and white, you know, yeah. and definition is is also um, um, flexible. But yeah. if you follow the the rules from uh, social business, how you know, see it, all profits what a company made has to be reinvested in the company. Yeah. In our case, it's not possible because we cannot actually convince uh, uh, um, huge investors. And and when, if you want to scale, you really need. Um, bigger amounts of capital to invest in the infrastructure. Yeah. So our model is we call us a purpose-driven for-profit company. So it's it's equal. I mean, we try to get uh, pay the interest the, the expected interest rate to our investors, mm -hmm. but our own focus on the company is to maximize the impact on our clients. Yeah. And um, but that's exactly the big problem that people don't understand really um, the idea behind it, and they are not ready for it. I mean, in the moment, impact investing and and um, impact driven investing is more green and whitewashing uh, than following really an idea, a new idea of investing. Yeah. You know, I'm mean, just an old idea to make profit in a greener way, but. HET and Yunus and all these people in the social entrepreneurship scene, they fight for a new system where money is needed and welcome 
and salary have to be paid. Everything stays the same. But the, the main focus is not on maximizing double-digit interest rates, maximizing the outcome on even the own people. I mean, Kadi said a very important point, to be happy. I mean, look to, to tremendous paid people in Germany in companies who are working for a bad company who destroy the, the environment, they get a huge salary. If you work for Shell or BP, I mean, how horrible must that be, you know? And these people are not lucky. They can buy five cars and go to holidays six times a year, but they are not happy because they know they destroy the environment of our children. And that's something what is much more important than money. And I hope many of our employees, they love to work with us. Um, even they don't get the highest salary what they can get in the market. Mm. And this is also an idea of of, of Yunus. Um, I think it's much more important that people are happy, healthy, and doing a good work for a good planet, for a good future. Yeah. And it's really easy. I mean, it's everybody can do it. <laughs> Just don't work for bad companies. I mean, that's the easiest way to change the world. Because if they don't find any employees anymore, they have to, 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 to stop. Yeah. Um, wow. Uh, <laughs> super. Thousand Kadi. Hey, now is your time to make uh, run your commercial for your um, current fundraising. Where do you need money for? Why why should people put the money on those two? Whatever. How, I don't know how many new projects you have. Yeah. yeah, you mentioned the, the pipeline of 100 million. I think that's you have to be explained because it's, it's a huge number. But um, let, 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 let give me the opportunity to, to say some words to frame it. Yeah, Africa is um, a continent on the rise. Kadi yeah. mentioned it has the youngest population on the world. Um, half of the population of Africa is under 15 years. If we look into the global north, to Germany, to Europe, to Japan, these societies are old. You know, mm. and um, so this human capital, what we can find in Africa is is hungry. They want to do something. They want to be entrepreneur. They want to to do something. And not all of them want to migrate to to uh, Europe. They love to stay in their home, but they have no. Yeah, yeah they have, they don't have possibilities or they don't have perspectives. Mm. So. Um, And if you looking now down to the to the situation of the economy in these countries, is that they they have no industry. They import most of everything from the global north, from China, but they have a huge potential in farming, and they have huge potential in everything what is close to I mean first value chain in the production chain. If you're looking for clothes, you know they have um, um, cotton here. But they export the cotton to Germany or to uh, India or to China, and then they get back our the clothing what is made in the global north. So mm. what what will be if they if they uh, have their own factories for t-shirts or for clothes? So we you know all these aspects. But there was in the geopolitical interest there was uh, the global north who wants to have this value in their own countries. So they 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 push down uh, the African development and. Mm. Um, HET really wants to enable people in this first value chain, especially in agriculture, because remember, please, 75% of the people in Africa, they eat the food what they produce themselves. It's not like in Germany that, 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 that there are no Aldi and Lidl and Rewe here. You know, mm. they have no shops. <laughs> they produce in their former garden uh, their own food. So helping to get a higher productivity that comes through this technical solutions what africa green tech is providing yeah. it's uh, renewable sustainable energy it's uh, solar solar pumping it's cool chain solutions and that helps especially the farming uh, to get more value out of their products yeah. some of the producers productions here they lose 70 percent of their um, of their farming results because they have no cool chain so mm -hmm. if you look to mangoes um, they have a, a farmer has 100 tons of mangoes, but it's only 30 tons who gets to the market. The mm -hmm. other is already destroyed. So mm -hmm. um, 
coming to the question why you should invest in HET, because we have all sources who are needed for a successful future. We have a young population who wants to work. We have sunshine like crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we have this first value chain, what you can develop with electricity very easy. And um, these three parts are rising up. And if people think that in Africa, we are in a renewable energy uh, uh, situation, no, we aren't. Yeah. These people here, even the industry is run by diesel even not by coal or by, by nuclear power plants, they really burn diesel every day. Yes. Billions of liters diesel every year. And this diesel, they import also from Global North. They have mm -hmm. raw oil, like Nigeria. They have raw oil, but they export the raw oil uh, to the refineries in the in, in Netherlands, and then they rebuy the diesel and burn them for electricity. Okay. And that's what we want to change. And in all this change, we have earnings. I mean, we can produce today electricity three times cheaper than our concurrences here with diesel chainsets. Mm. But what we need, we need the investment capital to install our solar power plants in villages, in cities. And we need this 10 years, 12 years to pay back the loans um, by, by um, producing energy and selling the electricity. And I think this is that what people have to understand. It is a little bit the same situation like 15 years before in Germany, where we started with the Erneuerbaren Energiegesetz. Yeah. There, the government guarantee a fixed price per kilowatt hour. And then all the banks were financing people who put some solar on their rooftop. And this situation, um, we and especially we do the same thing. We just install um, power plants and we sell electricity to a cheaper price than the market. And what we need is only the investment capital to to do so. So, yeah. 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 it's it's an easy thing. But people here, Africa, and they say, "Oh, I don't put money to Africa. These black people, they will steal all our money." Mm -hmm. And that's not the truth, you know. Yeah. But then, yeah. yeah. Thank, thank you, Thorsten. I think, yeah, as Thorsten mentioned, only nine percent of uh, electricity in Africa is through renewable energy sources. So. I think as a young continent, Africa is also foreseeing its transformation. And if we want to support that, uh, rather than supporting with the hunger strikes, which is good, that's as uh, um, um, Thorsten mentioned, that's emergency solution, but a sustainable way to support Africa is to support, for example, through uh, um, um, through energy transition. And then now we're seeing trends. So we have a uh, different section in Africa, Green Tech, where we have uh, for sure, emergency situation that's sub Saharan Africa. But we're also seeing East Africa, who's asking us for demand. And we have branches who are opening in, in Kenya, uh, uh, Zambia, and potentially Uganda, where it's another uh, transition that's ongoing. They really want renewable energy solution into yeah. existing. Uh, electricity uh, uh, solutions that they have and you can also support that and I think that's the best way as an African that I would ask someone to genuinely support me uh, is to give me uh, the, the solution and the autonomy to be auto-sufficient in the future and I think yeah. that's what the youth of Africa wants. will be dependent and wants. It want, we want that opportunity to realize our dream and to be part of this global uh, uh, world and be able to contributing and, and in a proud way for many years as Torsen said, um, it's been always been the image of just giving, uh, dropping rice uh, um, uh, to Africa, but now it's a, this is a modern way to, to contribute. So uh, our Series B crowdfunding is ongoing so people can invest. Uh, and hopefully we we open uh, we'll be uh, happy to also open to other markets in the future to more of a global market for investment. But at the same time, also if you want to visit us and get no, uh, to know more about Africa Green Tech, you can do that with zero carbon emission. We have a virtual event which is coming. It's a meet you event. It's going to be on January twentieth. It's going to be online. You can subscribe to that, and it's going to be from two to four p.m. It's on a meet you platform. 
We're happy to host up to 10,000 participants if you want from all over the world. So, yeah. And then um, you can learn and more And then you about can that. learn more about what we're doing on site. You can meet with our technicians. We can meet with our staff. You can even meet with some of our clients and, uh, and, and see us virtually and see what we're doing. So uh, please come on board yeah. <laughs> because we Excellent. can do this. Yeah. Excellent. And and that takes us uh, to my last question, uh, since you, you know finished it off so nicely. So what's your greatest bottleneck? Um, you, you mentioned uh, technology is an issue. We have all the technical solutions ready. What, what would accelerate your mission? Long-term loans <laughs> under 3% interest rate. Okay. <laughs> I think finance is not the only trainer for now because we have yeah. so much debt, as we know. Huh? Yeah. Uh, more than 600 million uh, people in Africa still wait for electricity and the cleaner yeah. it is, the better it is for, for all of us. And this is only the 600 million are only the people who have zero access to energy. Yeah. Yeah. We have an 400 gigawatts running diesel chainsets, what we can replace. So, yeah. I mean, the demand is nearly unlimited because don't forget, if people start having electricity, oh, yeah. the demand is doubling. Up. Yeah. yeah, that's that's because then they start being productive, then they start open their own businesses. And that's what we want. We mm. don't want that people migrate to another country. And I mean, the migration to Europe is, is our biggest fear in the political part. But most of the African, sub-Saharan Africans don't migrate to Europe. They even can afford it. Yeah, they migrate to the neighbor countries and that puts instability to the government because then you have yeah. a youth ethnic group sitting in a refugee camp and people who have even self nothing, they have to pay for these people from the neighbor country. That creates terrorism. I mean, yeah. if you're really looking to the geopolitical circumstances, um, we have also this responsibility. And if we have not responsibility to help, we have the responsibility to invest because we suck for centuries, uh, the raw material out of Africa to produce our phones, produce our computers, to run our cars. Yeah, it's time to give back. But the Africans are so proud, they don't want to have a donation. They would just want loans, give us a loan to a fair interest rate. We want to be autosufficient. We want to do our own thing. Yeah, but we don't have access to funds because this yeah. value was created in the global north. Yeah. And that thing is a very fair investment, and um, yeah, we I think we we can we can do something with the money, um, a good thing, and we are very transparent, Torsten, as you know. Yeah, you can look all what we do, and the Me Too event is a great opportunity to look behind the scenes. So I also, um, it's free; you don't have to pay anything. It's carbon emission free, <laughs> and you have four hours time to visit in a three D world. HET is partners, our villages, and it's really a great opportunity. And we're very happy. Um, thank you to meet you on that point because they um, they um, loved our work. So they donated the event costs, what is 100,000 right. euro um, to HET to give us the platform to present ourselves. If not, we couldn't afford that huge um, thing because it's technically really interesting. You you're running around with avatars. You can say hello. Oh, wow. you can it's it's really amazing. So twentieth yeah. of January, two p.m. Yeah, and we will be looking for you as well. To yeah, Torsten, you have to come there. <laughs> Promote. I'll be the there. I'll be there. Hey, Kadi, Torsten, thanks so much for joining. Thanks for the inspiration you you gave me and uh, hopefully all the other listeners. Um, Amazing work that you do. Uh, keep up the great work. Thanks a lot for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us.